Hi, readers. My name is Dawn Use, and I'm the coordinator for Book Trib's book club program. I'm here today with author Mike McLaughlin to talk about his book, The War You've Always Wanted, a story of discovery, courage, and sacrifice. The War You've Always Wanted is one of the selections available in Book Trib's book club program for June, and we are thrilled. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us today, Mike. Well, thank you very much. Nice to be talking to you. Fantastic. Let's dive in because I know we only have a few minutes. So no spoilers, but what can you share about your book that we wouldn't find on the jacket cover? Maybe a little insider knowledge. Well, um, I'll, it is a Vietnam history novel, but uh, at the heart of it, it's about the love between a father and a son. Uh, we have a father who's a World War II veteran and his son idolizes his father. Uh, the father's come back from the Second World War with a lot of souvenirs, which he keeps in a box. And the son always wants to see what's in the box because those treasures are just immeasurable to him. He is just so proud and so inspired that his father fought in World War II. But when he asks his father, what is it like? Uh, what was it like to have done that? The father is unable to explain. And uh, he keeps shying away from it. And eventually he becomes frustrated. And he doesn't want to talk about his time in the war. And then you flash forward to when his son is 19 years old, he enlists to go uh, to Vietnam. And uh, the father's frustration becomes almost anguish because he can't still really convey to his son what it was like. And now his son is going to basically follow in the father's footsteps. And it's, it's, it's tough. Wow. Uh, that sounds like it would already have some built-in themes to discuss for book club, but why do you think book clubs should select it? What makes this a great book club book? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, the second follows right on on the first, which is that it's a it's a life affirming story set in Boston. And um, I my experience has been that there have been very very few novels, it, maybe love story, <laughs> uh, but most of the novels set in Boston are pretty bleak. Um, there are desperate characters going through desperate times and the ending is never happy, it seems. There aren't many like that. And so I wanted to create something really a lot more positive. Uh, and as from a historical aspect, the, the, the main theme that um, I convey, running sort of parallel to the love between the father and the son, the, the secondary theme, which becomes the principal theme for the middle of the book, is about what was called Vietnamization. And uh, during the later years of the Vietnam War, especially by 1969, 1970, the American public had become so tired, so sick and tired of the war that uh, they, they regarded it as lost. And President Nixon began a program which is called Vietnamization in which the plan was that American combat troops would steadily leave the country, but they would support the South Vietnamese to fight the North Vietnamese uh, with weapons, materiel, and especially air cover. American aircraft would transfer uh, South Vietnamese soldiers and also attack North Vietnamese soldiers on the ground. So ultimately, it was a de facto returning the war to the people who had been fighting it all along. This is now a point of history that's not really considered by the public. And when people can review the war, they tend to think about these last years as just this you know, just this unknown period of time, and then the war ended. And for the people who lived in Vietnam who were struggling to remain a republic, uh, this was not the case. And as the Americans continued to leave, the situation for them became increasingly desperate. And finally, mm -hmm. of course, they lost. It only had one end. And so Dolan is a combat correspondent for the army, and he sees this firsthand. And uh, it is is just heartbreaking because he's heavily censored. You know, much of what she writes never gets published. So he becomes a silent witness to this tragedy, really. Yeah. And it gets to the point where he finally is desperate to survive and just get home, knowing that this country is doomed. It's yeah. Is this your first novel? Or your first yes, it is. Uh, it is. I can't even imagine the amount of research required for this. It's you go deep. I, I've been very fortunate. Um, I've written uh, book reviews uh, for Vietnam Veterans of America, their literary magazine. I owe a shout out to Mark Gleep, Mark Leeson, excuse me. He's uh, the editor in chief of the arts section there. He put me in contact with a lot of veterans who lived uh, in the period that I write about, 1971 to 72. In fact, Mark himself served then. So uh, I am very blessed to have teamed up with several veterans who have been very generous with their experiences and they've been inspiring 
And they have been my godfathers every step of the way. I've submitted drafts to them and I said, does this read as credible? If it doesn't, tell me and I will fix it. So uh, I've been working with these men for the better part of seven years. And wow. uh, the, the, this project has finally come to fruition and it would not have been possible without them. So I feel very blessed to know them. That's wonderful. Do you have another book in you? Like, are you Yes, I do. Um, I, well, incidentally, I, uh, I've written three more. Um, and wow. the second, second one is a sequel to the first one, but it's written in such a way that it can be read independently of the first. You don't necessarily have to read them sequentially. Uh, the second one begins about two weeks after the first one ends. And it follows Dolan through the remainder of his tour in Vietnam. He goes through increasingly uh, heavy combat, increasingly desperate circumstances. Uh, then he's wounded and he leaves and then he returns to Boston. And uh, the last act of the book is about him uh, reuniting with his father and trying to reacclimate to being in his hometown once again. And it's very, very difficult for him. So, you know, that one is called Goodbye, Sergeant Dolan. And uh, so I hope that one's going to come out. I submitted that to uh, Kohler Press. Uh, they're reviewing that right now. And, and the chances are fair that they will consider that they will publish it but that's you know fingers crossed of course yeah this industry is never a guarantee so no no I, it's a lot of faith I, I could honestly probably talk to you about your books forever but um i always have to ask this question so as a writer you're obviously also also a reader um mm -hmm. what's the best book you've read fiction or nonfiction, in the last little while and why should we add it to our tbr after we finished your book um, well, there's a classic novel from 1950, which I think a lot of people, and I'm sure quite a few book club members will will know, and it's called A Town Like Alice, and it's written by a British author, Neville Shute. And uh, it, it is a story set during and after World War II. Uh, it is a very inspiring novel. It uh, details the travels of a young English woman and several other women and children who have been captured by the Japanese in Malaya early in the war. And uh, they, because they are civilians and they're not men, none of the Japanese want to have anything to do with them. So these women and children are forced to walk several hundred miles all over the country trying to find a, a camp that will take them in. And they never find one. So they, they settle in a, in a Malayan village and they uh, live there doing farming for the rest of the war. And it's also a love story that there's a young Australian man who helps who helps them at a certain point along the journey. And uh, because he does that, he's terribly punished and everyone thinks that he has died. It turns out he survived the war and uh, this young woman loves the man very much. And the man has never forgotten the woman. He loves her very much. So she's coming from England. He's in Australia. And the question is, how do they find each other? And ultimately they do. Love so uh, it, it also is a very life affirming story. And uh, I've read it more than once. I've been rereading it this year. And a big shout out to Neville Shute. So it's almost 75 years old and it still holds up. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much for that and for talking to us today. We do have to sure. wrap it up, but uh, good luck with the book. And we'll be looking for the second one after we finish the first one. Well, thank you. I hope everyone out there uh, likes my stuff and they want to see more. And thank you to everybody for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. Fantastic. For more information about Mike's book, please check out the book club page on the booktrip.com website. Mm -hmm.